So you've got a cracker idea that you know will bring in the dollars, but you can't seem to find the money to fund the project. Man, that is so frustrating, which is why in this session, you're gonna learn the seven proven ways to fund your project. So sharpen your senses, sharpen your pencil, and stick around as you discover the power of pre-order, crowdfunding, beta testers, and R&D grants, just to name a few. G'day, I'm Nils Vest, and thanks for tuning in. Now, before we get into the funding methods, I'm gonna assume that you actually have validated your idea. If you haven't, well, you could be wasting a hell of a lot of time, energy, money, and reputation. So if you haven't got your head across validation yet, do it now by checking out the validation techniques in my latest book, the reinventionsprint.com. You can find it there, or at the very least, download the Relaxed Leader's Guide to Getting Anyone to Innovate, which you can find on our homepage, ideaswithlegs.com. Okay, now for those who won't check out those resources, there's always a few of them, here's the 25 word summary of the three critical components to validate. One, is your problem worth solving? Two, is the market willing to pay for a solution? Three, does your solution effectively solve the problem? No? Well, let's get on to the funding methods now. So method number one is pre-orders. Now, if you know there's a problem that people want solved because you validated it, and people are willing to pay for it because you validated it, then create a pre-order form on a landing page for your upcoming project. Um, you know, next, what you want to do is pay for some low-cost social media ads for your specific market and get the ads to send those prospective customers to your sales landing page and watch the money come in. Okay, it may not be as smooth sailing as that, but still, providing you validated that's a real problem worth solving and the market is willing to pay for it, people will want to sign up. So to get more people to sign up, one, Look at what bonuses or special status people will get if they pre-order versus waiting until it's completely ready. That usually gets them going. Two, you can work through all of the ideas you can think of before looking at discounting. Do discounting last. And three, I would probably suggest that you save that as a last resort. So um, what you can also do is to make sure your pre-sales landing page works, you need to have a few things in store. So the first one would be get a compelling headline. So here's an example that I've used before. The number one innovation mistake that people make that bleeds them dry. Uh, next thing you wanna do is clarify who it's for. Um, you, know, you know, sometimes you can just do that. Like one of my big, call it people magnets, called, um, it's called innovation leaders is in the big title. So, you know, um, the, the innovation leaders guide to helping getting anyone to innovate without violence. Like it calls out who it's for. Next thing you wanna do is list the critical benefits for the customer. And here, what you wanna think of maybe five ways that your product or service will make them or save them money, or how it will help them avoid effort. Will it help them escape pain or get you know make things more comfortable, get them praise? That's one of the ways you can do it. So another thing we wanna be able to do is identify the main pain point. And that is, what does not solving the problem cost the customer? financially, emotionally, and physically. And um, that's just really, really valuable. So you might go, you know, not solving this problem, um, it's gonna cost you $2,000 a week or $20,000 a quarter, whatever it might be. Another thing you wanna do is try to position your product as being similar to something else. So uh, people are scared of the unknown. You know, they really need to often have something that they can associate it with. So you might say something like, this product is like, and then you talk about existing available product, but without this painful feature. So let me give you an example. Crisp is a, this is I'm giving you a bit of background. Um, Crisp is a nifty tech product I use. And in, in essence, it's a noise reduction software that eliminates background noise on conference calls. So here's an attempt I might use to help position this one. Say, um, Crisp, it's kind of like having an AI sound editor removing background noise, but without spending a fortune. Um, that's it. So, you know, my product is like this, but different because of that. And that different could be it's better because of this. Next thing you want is social proof. Now, this might be hard if your product isn't fully built or in production yet, but if you can get some early beta users to gain testimonials, great. If not, you can actually use statistics to help emphasize why they should need it. For example, um, uh, if I had a productivity software, 
I could use a statistic that says something like, the average business person spends 80 minutes a day reading their emails. Um, that's actually a real, from a, a study a buddy of mine done. Um, so it's a, it's a real statistic, but it's sort of like social proof as to the problem. It may not be about your product, but that there is a need around that one. Next thing, make sure you've got a call to action. So be specific about what you want them to do. Uh, for example, register here now, um, you know, download here, um, sign up there. And the last thing that's probably really useful is to create a sense of urgency or scarcity. So you might have a pre-order, our pre-order bonus offer closes in 48 hours or there's only 200 pre-order bonuses available. But you've got to make sure that your scarcity or urgency is legitimate. Okay, that was method one. Now it's time for method two. And I call this budget borrowing. You know what, the simplest way to get funding for components of your program is to call the project anything but innovation. Unless, of course, you seem to have an organization that loves supporting innovation projects. Now, if it's a product you want funding for, you could use some synonyms such as product modernization project or a product modification or product improvement product variation or a product enhancement or an advancement, a renovation, a reinvention, an overhaul, a rejuvenation, product flexibility. Um, you get the idea for that and there's some synonyms there that you can find to help you out. Method three is about crowdfunding. Now crowdfunding sites such as Kickstarter are the platforms where you can get people to financially back your project and uh, hundreds of Kickstarter campaigns have raised six figure funds. So. Ingredients behind the most successful campaigns uh, include being crystal clear about the problem it solves, the quality of a solution, and a compelling message. Definitely a demo video, and um, then it goes down to how good your network is. Now, when you choose your crowdfunding site, think of locality, history of campaigns, you know what successes you might have had, um, whether the solution fits into the types of campaigns that the selected crowd platform supports. Um, make sure also you've got some compelling ideas around what bonus they're going to gain by taking the risk to invest in your solution. Okay, other ways we can get money. Um, method four, beta testers. Having beta users or a pre-launch is a great way to get funding before completing a project. Now, beta users know that there's going to be some kinks in whatever you offer, but they also know that they're going to get an exceptional deal, which you make sure you've got to offer by offering something, and they also get to become a part of something new and exciting. So they get to provide the input, and most, of, most importantly, you can gain um, social proof as well as some funding for your project. So make sure you're clear about the benefits and the status that they'll gain to make them feel like a part of the team. All right, method number five, industry partnerships. You know, you don't always have to go it alone. I've worked with several companies that have created partnerships with non-competing companies in different industries. Um, just ask the question, you know, what industries or organizations could benefit massively by being involved in this project? I've got an amazing client of mine called Edge Environment. They've often partnered up with developers who want to get the green tick for things and also they want to profit. So it's a win-win situation for them. Method six, down to the last few. Uh, government R&D grants, research and development grants. Now I've got a mentoring client of mine who absolutely specializes in just that and he brings people government R&D grants. And it's not to say you can't do it, it's just that usually it's a bit of work. People don't like doing work, so they get other people to do it for them. He's one of those people. But depending on which country and state or territory you live in, you're probably gonna be amazed at how much funding there is for innovation projects. And some will even go as far as having a 50-50 investment agreement, which is something like, you know, you commit and spend 10 grand and they'll throw in 10 grand each. Um, yes, there's some paperwork, but many experts can help you to take the plunge and do it. And even people like me, my fees um, can come from that actual um, R&D grant there as well. Okay, method number seven, angel investor or venture capital. Now, some people might call these people sharks, but you know what, the reality is the angel investors, they're putting their money on the line and, um, and the uh, venture capitalists are putting other people's on the line. So, you know what, if they say yes, they want to invest in your idea, but you decide not to go ahead, it doesn't, doesn't matter. It means that you're onto a winner. Um, however, if you choose to take them up on an offer, just make sure, please check all of the terms with your legal advice because um, they're in it for the money. Angel investors, again, throw in their own money. Venture capitalists invest other people's money. And so what that means, from my experience, venture capital firms require a lot more paperwork to get over the line than angel investors. Um, for a list of venture capital firms, 
check out the links I've got here. You might head to a directory like crunchbase.com. Um, they've got an organization slash VC dash directory or something like that. That's it. So now you have some practical ways to get funding. Um, if you found this really valuable and you want more information, hey, check out a program I have called the 30 Day Online Business Reinvention Course. Um, links down below. Thanks so much for tuning in. If you liked it, please give it a like and subscribe. And um, if you've got any success with this, please direct message me, email me, put it in the comments so I know how you're going. And we'll see you soon. Cheers. Bye.